these topics will induce your thinking in a specific direction and will bother you in answer writing. All these things I have discussed. Now what we enjoy ourselves with is the type of questions that are asked in ethics one after another. Then there are five varieties of questions which are there in ethics. Let us see that. Five different varieties of questions that appear in ethics one by one. We will try to answer them. Question number one. First variety of questions. First type. Direct questions, the easiest of all. These questions require reproduction of factual information. Reproduction of factual information. Let us enjoy one question of this nature. What is it? What is indefinite? Why is it needed in administration? Question was simple. Eh? What is empathy? Why is it needed in administration? Now, another thing I wish to share with you is this. In last few years, some case studies have come in ethics. Every year, there are around six case studies in the paper of Rudy Marks. Now, since these case studies are there, every case study is about one or the other topic that is mentioned in our syllabus. Say, for example, one case study may pertain to whistleblowing. Other case study may pertain to impartiality. Yet, other case study may relate to compassion. Now, when you write a question, answer to the question like this, you need to create your own case, present it in few words, to suggest that this is the way compassion or empathy needs to be demonstrated by administrator and these benefits it will provide to administration. So by going over those case studies again and again, you will get a fair idea about how to generate your own case study or to borrow that and transplant here, okay, to make your answer good. Now for example, uh, when I answer this question, there are two words, two that are of critical importance. Now the question is whether you write them or not. And the entire answer can be finished in two words because it will revolve around only two words. Sir. Number one, what is it that? In this, the word becomes which is important is perspective taking. And why it is needed in administration? The critical word is human face. A pale person in words ki What will empathy do in administration? It will provide administration the human face. It will turn administration from becoming very impersonal, ruthless at times. That is why we need empathy. 
ये वो चेहरा प्रदान करेगी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को जिसकी वजह से लोगों के अंदर तरंग और उमंग न जाग जाएगी दिस इज वॉट यू नीड इन सची इट विल प्रोवाइड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन द्यूमन फेस अब ये हो गया मामला सर नाउ वट यू नीड टू थिंक नेक्स्ट इज वन इलेन टू सपोज दिस and one example of a person who is very empathetic say for example mother teresa <coughs> or baba amde he has done an enormous work with leprosy patients so this is what is empathy see empathy is an abstract thing now if i say you show me your empathy you can't remove your chest sir see <laughs> this is the my chest shows my empathy देखो वो तो सिर्फ मोदी जी का है छप्पन इंच का सीन था हमारा थोड़े वही देखिए तो इंपैथी आप ऐसा तो कह देते हैं आई कैन सी इंपैथी सो फ्रॉम वेर यू शो योर इंपैथी सर बताओ फ्रॉम वेर राइटिंग आंसर सर तेरा क्रिएटिव बनो यार अरे थ्रू योर बिहेवियर्स आंसर आई थिंक इज आल्सो बिहेवियर बट दैट इज अ वेरी व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज नैरो वे ऑफ सेइंग दैट आई विल शो माय इंपैक्ट थ्रू राइटिंग आंसर अरे इससे तो थोड़ा रंगीन बात बोलते हैं आई विल शो माय इंपैक्ट बाय राइटिंग इन द मैटर आपने उम्र के हिसाब से आंसर दो ये होता है ना आंसर यहां पर कैसे दिखाओगे इन द बी एज एन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर देखो जी ओल्ड वुमन केम टू यू शी सेड सर Sir, what the point or not? 
अरे आज ही आपकी सारी दुविधा दूर दूर हो जाएगी सर योर इंटायर प्रेड अकमेंट विल गेट आंसर्ड हेयर टुडे हाउ डू यू गो अबाउट आंसर राइटिंग नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर टू लेट अस एंजॉय सेकंड वैरायटी क्वेश्चन Second variety questions. Are thinker or quotation based questions? और कोटेशन बेस्ड क्वेश्चंस व्हेन यू हैव टू आंसर दीज क्वेश्चंस थ्री थिंग्स हैव टू बी टेकन कंसीडर नंबर वन कॉन्टेक्स्ट इन विच द गिवन स्टेटमेंट वॉज मेड देखो जिंदगी में ना शब्द कितने इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है किस बैकग्राउंड में वो कहे गए वो इंपॉर्टेंट है कॉन्टेक्स्ट इन विच द गिवन स्टेटमेंट वॉज मेड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू से आई डोंट प्रेफर टू स्पीक टू टू मेनी पीपल बिकॉज माई थ्रोट इज ऑलवेज टायर्ड ओके नाउ वेन यू से दिस यू डोंट डीन You see the others and deal in the interaction with others. It could also be a very genuine statement saying that you are preoccupied with lot of work and therefore you are not in a position to speak. But there are some people who take offence. So understand the things in those terms. That is why there is a very famous person by the name Carl Jung. He said once a very Revelational line that anything, anything that irritates us about others does reflect something about our own self. If I am irritated by you, that means I am an incomplete unit myself. Anything that irritates us about others. Does inform something about our own self. So it is informing us something about our own self also. Why I am getting irritated? Probably I am still a work in progress. I am not a finished article yet. That is how it is. So you can understand context in which given statement was made. Martin Luther King Jr. said once. Time is always right for the right thing. Time is always right for the right thing. Now Martin Luther, Luther King Jr. was the product of the times when discrimination in America against black was all time high. Now when he was making this statement, he was making this in the context that this is the time that you put legislations in place to protect the rights of the blacks. Now, if you say, "Oh, when well, the time will come, we will do it," so this is the right time. Do it now. The answer is this. So, context in which given statement was made. Now, the second is How relevant is the statement in present day context? How relevant is the statement in present day context? For example, Mahatma Gandhi once said that nature has enough for human need, but not enough for human greed. Now the entire concept of sustainable development is based on this. 
Mahatma Gandhi talked about sustainable development in his time. See, the kind of visionary he was. And today we realize how important it is to protect the fragile nature because his mother earth gets angry, it will punish us like anything. So Mahatma Gandhi's statement becomes even more relevant. Or Mahatma Gandhi's statement while driving the car, you must remember this. That you see, you cannot humiliate me without my consent. Agar mein ijajat do, to aap meri ijajat na do, to aap meri ijajat na hi utar sakte. Dekho ji, har aadmi kya prayas kare, dousar ki ek bar ijajat utar gaya. Kyo? Ek bar dousar ki utar gaya, to aapni jab bhi utar gaya, tension nahi gaya. Ye jindi ki kari ho gaya. Ek bar usko utar gaya. To humari utar gaya, koi baat ke mene ke dekhen to usar gaya. See, what is the most unfortunate thing in life? When your elder sibling gets into IAS in first attempt and gets the rank number one. That is the worst thing that can happen to you. You know why. Now you have got nothing to conquer. You see, fathers will say, you are the same product. <laughs> now how is it that you are not qualifying the examination? देखो जो बड़ा भाई थोड़ा इच्छुक है खाते में नहीं जिंदगी में तो आपको सुकून रहता है। If his boat hits the turbulent water, you are happy. Then if my hits, my boat also hits the turbulent water, it is not saying nothing to be disturbed about. That is what the idea is. So you can understand present day context and third. Can it be linked with governance? It's a point here. Can it be linked with governance in any way? Kya is karista governance se ban sakta hai? Aao vista banai. Vicha jaaye vista banai. Vista jaaye vista banai. Enjoy establish relationship. Dekh ya, three things. Sir, you got the point or not? All three. Now enjoy the statement, sir, and tell me what does it mean. I love this. Look 
for fertility in wrong places. Most everybody is here. <laughs> Sir, I ask you a very accurate question. Why do you apply Tila here and not here? <laughs>
that physics is far more relative than ethics. In the matters of relativism, physics outscores ethics. Question here, yes, sir. Physics is far more absolute than ethics. Because if apple has detached from the branch, it will hit the ground. It will hit the ground in New Delhi and in Rawalpindi also. As a near from Pakistan, we are going to save your business. As a near, ground will be able to get it. So physics is far more absolute than ethics. There is no denying this fact. When it comes to the matter of absoluteness, physics is far more absolute than ethics. Far more absolute than ethics. But why did Einstein say that relativity can apply to physics and not to ethics? In other words, what Einstein was trying to say is that he can admit the scope of relativity in physics, but not relativity in ethics. The reason is simple. If ethics becomes subjective, they pose the risk to humankind. Means what? There is a Chinese proverb which says that there are three kinds of truth. Your truth, my truth and truth. Your truth, my truth and truth. So when you say your truth and I say my truth, so truth will become a casualty or not? Yes. The same way for ethics also. Now if there is selective application, selective application, then we will not be using ethical principles for the welfare of humankind. So Einstein was driving home this point that when it comes to the matter of ethics, there should be complete agreement regarding what they are and a complete commitment to conduct our life in accordance with our ethics. Because only when that is done, a science like physics can be used for the welfare of humankind. Not only physics, every discipline can be used for the welfare of humankind. So Einstein says that if we have a deal with ethics, then what do you say? You say that our ethics is. मैं कहूंगा जी ये तो मेरा एथिक्स है समझ गए और मेरे और आपके एथिक्स के झगड़े के बीच में जो संसार है वो नष्ट हो जाएगा तो लिहाजा अगर फिजिक्स का सदुपयोग करना है तो एथिक्स में हमें एग्रीमेंट बनाना है अगर हमारा एथिक्स में एग्रीमेंट नहीं बन पाया तो बहुत डेंजरस है सर इट के कॉज प्रॉब्लम इन वर्ल्ड आइंस्टाइन डिड नॉट रिफ्यूज द फैक्ट that the scope for disagreement on ethics is far greater than physics because ethics is a normative science. But what he was insisting that we must place ethics at the higher pedestal than physics. At the higher pedestal than physics, we must place ethics. You know why? Because why in physics there can be a disagreement? But in ethics, there should not be any disagreement. Because if there is disagreement on ethics, selective application of ethics will start. And that will spell doom for humankind. That is what his idea was. Well. He was cognizant of the fact that when it comes to ethics, probably to conceptualize a uniform body of ethics, which is followed very religiously by all individuals, is a sort of a utopian idea. Practical implication is very difficult. But the But the basic theme that or the point he was driving home was that even when it is a utopian idea difficult to realize, we must strive for it. 
Because only when you have ethics as one uniform body and an application of ethics very uniformly, the chances are that branches of knowledge that human beings have uh, developed will their information will be used for the welfare of human kind. Otherwise, not. You got the point or not? This is whatever answer is, sir. As an interpretation of the quotation now. Now the question is, in context of governance, how is it applicable? Do you find any link with governance? Answer is yes. Why is it that code of ethics is present? That is my sex relief syllabus. Why is it that code of ethics is present for the administrators? So that administrators are provided with discretionary powers. Powers which are at their discretion. Now, because, why are they provided with discretionary powers? Because if they were not given discretionary powers, then carrying out administration would become very difficult. You see, there are so many unforeseen situations that may come up. You do not know about them. Discretionary powers will allow you to tackle the challenges of the unforeseen situations. But the problem with providing discretionary powers happens to be if administrators are not bound by ethics, they will use those powers for their own welfare rather than the welfare of the public or not. However, if there is a set of ethics that they follow and follow them religiously, we can be assured that the powers that they have will be used for the welfare of the subjects. And yet, that is the reason why we, Einstein's uh, uh, point is very relevant in the context of administration as well. This is the way you have to answer the question. And yet, sometimes they ask this question also. What is science? Is ethics a science? Science is a body of systematized knowledge gathered by observing and measuring events. The two features of science happen to be observation and measurement. What is the most beautiful aspect of science? Replicability. Things can be put, reproduced again and again. So, therefore, better verifiability. Okay, that is, these are the features of science. Replicability, verification, repetition, observation, measurement. Falsification, all these are the features of science. On that grounds, you can say, well, ethics will never have the kind of accuracy of pure sciences. But yes, you can call it definitely a normative science. It is a normative science. There is no doubt about that. So, sir, point number one understood, first quotation. Now, the second one has come in the examination. Let us read that down. This has come in the examination. Please try to understand and answer it. This is the statement made by Plato. So it will lit up the eyes of people who study political science. But then there can be constriction of pupil as well. As many interpretations also will follow from it. They can. We can forgive a child who fears the dark, but the real tragedy of the society is when men are afraid of light. I
Plato's half said this. Now there are many Plato and Socrates present here also. <laughs> These are the Socrates of political science. <coughs> So what do you think this statement means? <coughs> there are so many such Socrates and Plato present here. Yes ma'am, what do you think? If you want to answer it. If you want to, no pressure from our side. Life is a celebration. Civil service profession is, a, is an utsa. <laughs> so no pressure, real life. <laughs> Best learning comes in a state of relaxation. Pressure in the Any person who has eaten the salt of political science, this is a political science can namak two sides. I am two of them. No problem, sir. I will interpret. Sir, would you like to say something? Yes, sir. You are very handsome, man, sir. Please tell us. See how many people are looking at you. <laughs> would you like to throw up some light, sir, or not? Sir, see. The moment the question comes, our understanding is very right clear. Identify crucial points. Number one, child. Number two, man. Number three, dark. Number four, white. What is the difference between child and man? Please tell us, sir. A man is what? Adult. <laughs> Man is an adult. <laughs> when did you get to know about your adult status? When you saw the king for the first time in the cinema? Or before that? Are you, sir? No, very right. Adult. But what adult has? Which the child also has. But the child is not in a position to use. <laughs> Child fears the dark and we can pardon the child for doing so. Answer is simple. Child's mental faculties are limited. Mother tells the child, dear son, come out. Let us go in the dark. Let us venture into dark. The child says, no mom, no. I have a fear of dark. She says, dear son, dark does not denote danger. There are few things to be accomplished in dark as well. <laughs> don't, don't have abnormal fear for dark. But the child says, no mom, no. I will not take any risk. Even when 
and you tell me with chocolates. I will not venture into that. 